Heavenly Father, we want to thank and praise your name this time. We appreciate your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Thank you because our faith is not in vogue. It is not in isolation. It is not hopeless. We thank you because every day we have many reasons to be hopeful. That after all, we are not living for you in vain. We ask again that you will drop your word in our heart and so edify us through the word that is coming our way in Jesus name. Please speak to us and bless us greatly. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Today we want to do a backup on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have looked at the purpose and power of his resurrection. And we also decided that there is need to worship because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why are we doing that? Because there will have been no Christian faith. Our religion will have been hopeless. It will have just been like any normal, casual, religious movement. But the difference is the cross. And we thank God because when he died, they did everything to hinder him from resurrecting, but he arose. Hallelujah. Now we are going to follow up from there the events that happened thereafter. And that is what we call the ascension of Jesus Christ. It is also very important to the Christian calendar, to the Christian fold, because... It brings strong assurance to us that someday we are going to put on an immortal body and we will equally ascend the same way that he did. The ascension of Jesus Christ is his literal departure from the heart to heaven. He was literally, physically taken up to heaven in a village called Bethany, on the mount, in the company of 11 of his 12 disciples. This was 40 days after Jesus' resurrection. Between the day he resurrected on Easter Sunday and 40 days thereafter, he showed himself to about 500 brethren, and those encounters spanned from the book of John chapter 20 to chapter 21, he met with the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, where he gave them fish to eat and invited them to come and dine. Then he showed himself at various instances also. After that, he gave command to his disciples. And on the fortieth day after his resurrection, the Lord Jesus Christ ascended to heaven. And today he is seated far above all principalities at the right hand of God the Father. Let's look at what the Bible has to say about that as we pray. In Acts of Apostles chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. I will read from verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up. That is ascend, ascension. That he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he has chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion that is the passion week by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which says he ye shall have had of me. Go straight to verse 9. And when he has spoken these things, why they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And why they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two, two men stood by them in their apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, 
Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall also come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. The Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Theophilus, the writer of this word, made this treaty and brought clarity to what happened after Jesus Christ resurrected. The disciples were shut down and he went into their midst, sat in their midst automatically, and he opened their eyes and they knew him. At again, the disciples were on their way to Emmaus. He followed them and he encountered them. When he sat to break bread, their eyes were opened and they knew him. Then he disappeared. And in several instances like that for 40 days, but now there came a time in a place before 11 of his 12 disciples, don't forget at this time, Judas Iscariot had committed suicide. So they were left with 11. And there he gave them command that they should tarry in Jerusalem until they are endowed with power from on high before they will begin their own earthly ministry. As soon as he made a end of that presentation, Jesus was received supernaturally. He ascended into heaven. And they were looking at him until he disappeared into the cloud, literally like that, and then traveled home through a spacecraft to go and meet the Father in heaven. And while that was happening, two angels appeared and ministered to the disciples. This same Jesus that you see, go into heaven, shall in like manner, come again. That introduces us to the foundation, the fulcrum of the Christian faith. It is number one to give us assurance that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, went home literally. Other prophets, other messengers of God, they died, they were buried, and they ended up in the grave. But Jesus Christ was unique because he died the third day he rose. And then in order to justify his identity, his personality, we can see that he was literally taken up into heaven. And this angel preached and said, This same Jesus you see going, he shall in like manner come down again. And that introduced us to the events that will happen in the last day. It is to encourage us, Maranatha, Jesus Christ, we come again. And then that talks about the rapture and the second advent of Christ. So what we shall be doing from thereafter is to examine the message of the angel that said, this same Jesus that you see carry on unto heaven is going to come again. So he is gone to heaven, but he's coming again. When is he coming? Why is he coming? How will he come? Those are, these are more we shall be examining in the coming days by the grace of God. But let me quickly remind you that this coming Thursday by the grace of God, our National Ministers Conference comes up and we have delegates from across the six geopolitical zones of this country storming our headquarters, uh, both young ministers, upcoming ministers, and then established ministers will be sitting together side by side to learn at the feet of Christ. And I pray that as you participate, you can do a lot. You can give to support this project that is costing the ministry millions of naira. And you can also pray. You can groan. You can lay your all on the altar. You can also come along with us. Or if you are far, you can connect online where we expect that you will be powerfully blessed by the revelation word that will be coming from my lips and other anointed and appointed servants of God for the purpose of this conference. Once again, it's the camp we open on the 8th, Thursday, 8th of April, which is this coming Thursday, just four days to come, and then it will span through till Saturday by the grace of God. Promise to be a great time in God's presence. I cannot wait to see you there. God bless you real good in Jesus' name. Our Father, we thank you and praise your name because of the uniqueness of our Savior, the uniqueness of our faith, and the uniqueness of our confession. Thank you because again, our heart is encouraged 
that irrespective of whatever we may be going through in this land, there is a great hope for us that someday this same Jesus is coming again in his glory, in his germinal, to come and reunite with us, reassociate with us, to come and take us home from this very terrible bad world. Lord, we pray that you so prepare us for your soon and imminent return in Jesus' name. Please bless our hearts, encourage and strengthen us. Thank you, gracious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.